a tunnel update on the vertical garden. Or should I say the kennel? Hi everybody, it's Robbie from Southern California. <sighs> if I sound out of breath, I have been working like mad. I've been potting up plants and doing all kinds of things. Well, when I say potting up plants, I'm propagating. Looky, looky, I just wanted to show you, it's gone. Not only is it down, it's gone. He already dismantled it and he took it to his garden. I'll have to go see on his phone if he did any footage because I asked him to. And if he did, I will definitely put it in here. I wish he would talk about how he did it or what he's doing. You know what? If you ask me questions, maybe I can put something together and make him answer your questions. I know he's busy because what he's doing today is he's dragging out the dog kennels and he's gonna look at them and decide where it's gonna go. With me, of course, because he doesn't want any part of this. He doesn't wanna be gardening inside anything. He wants everything in the ground. But for me, it could be in the ground if I use the dog kennel, but I've got other ideas. As it stands right now, and you know how things could change, I'm gonna leave the chair since they're set up. I've been loading in leaves. And even if I don't plant, in them right now, and I do have Malabar spinach and other things trying to grow, I can run out here after the holidays and start to look at it and know that they're already set up. And as they collapse the soil, at that point, I could add in more leaves from around the yard and then top it either with soil from the ground, soil from another tote, or potting soil, which I still have that bag that's been sitting all summer there. You know, like an inch or two on the top. This way the plants, if I, if they're in a container that I started in the house, will be used to that soil or just push in some seeds. Look, you know what? If the weeds are already growing and there's no soil in here, this is everything breaking down, I would say I can grow. Let's see what's here. I just threw this here because I want to use this to cover. Look at this. If the weeds are growing, and I'll just turn that, then definitely I can grow in there at any point. I'm making new tops. I have new ideas that are working out even easier and better than that. So I've got a lot coming this spring. So I am gonna leave this because the tunnel, I think it was about eight to 10 feet wide, something like that. And the dog tunnels are only four. Yes, I could put two together and make it eight foot wide, but see how it peaks? I'd have to reconstruct the entire thing. Could I do it? Of course I can do it, or Gary could do it, either one of us. But I'm gonna set it up. Let me get into the shade, because the sun is coming up. It's supposed to be warm today. But I wanna set it up as it comes. What I'm trying to do is make it easier. And even the way it is, it's got plenty of room and I can stand in it. I think it's gonna be so cool that I can walk down the middle 20 feet. Well, let's stop. Not 20 feet. 16 feet. I'm going to add the front or the back panel from each one, which will give me an extra four feet, but it's going to be on the end. I won't be able to stand in that. Oh, you've got a gorgeous hawk. Let's look for a minute. Hopefully you can see him up there, sitting in the, on the pole there, looking down at me, wondering what is she doing? Okay, let's get back to this. I digress. And at the end, I can put either totes on two chairs, I can put two totes on the end, or I can put them on the ground. I can decide, I can put them on anything, some bricks, whatever I want, we'll see. I'm not there yet. The first thing we've got to do is put it up. Now, I think it's gonna go up fairly quick. We had that thing up. Well, I said, let's say I filmed Gary doing it, and he had that thing up in a matter of an hour, I think. It goes together quick, it goes like a puzzle, but remember, I'm not done with that. I'm going to put a special wire on there to keep critters out. I will get a roll of that. I will have to order that soon. I have a half a roll left from doing that dog kennel. So I probably will get one more roll and that will give a good footage all the way around the new one since it's so big. And then I still have one more thing I'm gonna do. And yes, I'm keeping pollinators out. So this will be, like I said, I could grow squash in there, melons in there. I will have to hand pollinate. Am I gonna grow tomatoes in there? I don't know because I don't really have too many problems with tomatoes, but I could if it was tomatoes I wanted to grow. All you have to do is shake the plant because it's wind pollinated, so we don't have to worry about that. Yes, bees and little critters come to it, but the point is it is still wind pollinated. I can do flowers in there if I wanted to do cut flowers or 
kale. I'm gonna see as it goes what I am going to put in there, but all in all, it's gonna be gorgeous. But he literally took this apart and he dragged it. He told me I wasn't here because I was working on something else all the way down to his garden and then he's gonna set it up when he's ready. That's gonna be really cool. And then you already know that this has been set up and this is gonna be again for the spring. I will get those totes emptied and I will be moving all the bottom totes to the top rail there, the first one. And then that one, I'm not sure if I'll use those totes. One of them's really old. It's been sitting empty in the yard. You don't do that. It dries out, but I'll see if I'm gonna use that blue one on the end or I might just use all the brown ones. That's kind of my goal. Kind of keep it neutral when you walk out here. And then here I can have a little more color because this is where my rainbow garden, and this is an extension of my rainbow garden. But today, my main thing today was to show you that he told me, I, I have to ask him, he had this out in about an hour or so, maybe two hours, the whole thing. It was so simple, he said, to do. He knows how to work with it. And yet, it's such a strong unit. You saw him put it together. You could climb on it. And to take it apart, it was just clip, 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 all the wires that he put up to hold it. And then he dragged it all the way down the hill to his garden. And now it's down there, and he can put it up when he wants, when he's ready. In the meantime, I'm going to get this thing ready. I'm going to save for the spring but I'm already growing in that one and I'm propagating in that one. So I will do that right away. I don't have to wait. Even if it's not covered, it's gonna keep out the rabbits. I'm not sure on the squirrels they can, right now until it's covered, squirrels can't get into that one right now. They haven't tried. I can do whatever I want in there, but I think I'm gonna take my time, decide if I'm gonna buy any more racks like I did for the other one, or if I'm gonna build my own. I'll be able to step back and decide. I could do all totes. The same thing I had here. I could grow cucumbers in there. I could grow melons in there, watermelon. I could end up going in that route, at least half of it, let it climb the wire inside and nothing's gonna eat it. Well, that's not true. Something's gonna eat it. Me, Gary, will be able to eat it because no critters, no rodents, no brown squirrels are gonna get to it. Like I said, we've got a lot of tree squirrels around here and they don't bother the fruit. They come and get some seeds, and that's about it. But the fruit, uh-uh, it's the ground squirrels. They live on the ground, they do very little climbing, just enough to get into things and cause damage. But this is going to be fantastic, and you'll see as he puts it together. If you wanna see an update, tell me, yes, I wanna see as he puts it together, because this is gonna be strategizing. We gotta lay it out, and this is gonna be 20 feet. So it's gonna go longer than the tunnel that was here. It was 15 feet. This is gonna go 20 feet. So it's gonna go past these chairs, but that's gonna be so cool. Gee, do I leave that table there? We kind of dragged it out because we found it somewhere. I don't know. I don't know. I might leave the table there or I might find another place for that table. We have a lot of stuff we're moving around and cleaning up and deciding what we need and putting it in a neat place so I can go salvage through my own stuff and it doesn't have to be scattered all over. So that's gonna be really cool. I'm really excited about this. And the reason I am so excited about the dog kennel is because so many of you have come to me and said, I can't garden. I got cats running all over my neighborhood and the cats come in and they dig in my garden and then we don't wanna eat it. I don't blame you, I wouldn't eat it either. That's one thing we don't have around here are a lot. Occasionally you'll see a cat but unfortunately, we have so many coyotes that a lot of people that leave their cats out lose their cats. We do have coyotes. They don't bother my garden too much. Some of you said you got a dog and the dog gets in there and digs everything up. You won't have to worry about it. It's a dog kennel. Dog can't get in. If he can't get out, he's most certainly not getting in. And then if you've got ground squirrels, yes, I'm going to show you how we're going to take care of that. If you've got insects, there's been a major insect problem this year. Now for me, insects wasn't a big issue and you know why, but I do want to change that up in the spring as well. We feed a ton of birds in the bird garden that's back there and they come in all day. We sat there this morning, Gary and I having coffee and he was saying, I think there's 30 uh, spice finches. And I said, oh no, no, I see 30 and there's more on the other. There might be 50. He wants to do some photos and count and do a counting on them. We have so many birds here and we saw the warblers came back and the white crowns are coming back. 
they eat our insects. And a lot of them are here all spring and summer cleaning up the insects. So insects has not been a big problem and we don't need a spray, but there was one tragic thing that happened. Oh, I didn't collect this year monarchs. Normally I put them in totes, I put netting over it, a tool, and then I, as they come out of their cocoons, chrysalids, whatever you want to call it, I let them go and they fly through the sky. Well, I had a few of you come in and tell me, you can't do that. How dare you touch them? You have to leave them to nature. They're outlawed. Who's going to come here and tell me I can't cover them with tool? And there was so much going on. I thought, okay, fine. I won't cover them. But you know what? That was a mistake because what did happen here is the birds came in and they ate the eggs as well because they go through and eat the insect eggs and any little caterpillars they can find. So I only found one monarch caterpillar and on top of that, I didn't see as many because normally they're just coming out all over and filling the skies because there were so many birds. So I'm going to change that up. I'm just going to drape it with tulle, maybe black tulle. You won't see it. I'll know it's there. And when I see a lot of monarchs on one, since I have so much milkweed, I'll just cover it. When they start to come out and get ready to fly, I'll just uncover it, let them go. I don't have to touch them. When I had created so many monarchs last year, I can't even count. And this year, not one did I see come out of here because there were so many other creatures around here. So I'm going to change that up next spring. And I think that will be really cool. So I'll have a ton of monarchs flying about the sky. I'm going to have more milkweed in different areas. I might put pots along here with milkweed because I've got milkweed growing everywhere. Weed, hence it grows. This is milkweed. I do have a lot of insects on there right now. And though I could get rid of a lot of them, all my ladybugs are doing their job. So I'm letting them feast on that. And I think it's going to be a fun spring coming up, especially I have a new garden. And like I was saying, you got gophers, you put your totes, get a tote garden on chairs, and you have no more gopher problems. One of my neighbors, his biggest problem was gophers. And when he came to me, I said, well, just lift them, put them on chairs. And now they can grow all kinds of stuff. Everybody's got their own challenges in their garden. So you have to look and see what is yours, write it down and look at it and say, okay, how do I fix this? Because I do believe when it comes to gardening, we can fix everything. And it doesn't have to cost us a lot of money. We just have to step back. You know, let me tell you something. It was funny. I was watching TV, YouTube, and last night a video of mine popped up. The one on Tool is a lifesaver for me. I'm sitting there last night working on a video, a cooking video. So many of you asked for it. And I look up and I go, oh my goodness. I put that together a few years ago. And what did I forget? Right behind me, I made a tool garden. I'm sitting there thinking, I need to watch some of my own videos. I could have done that. I said to Gary, after he took this all down, I could have made a tool garden. I could have tooled the entire thing like I did in the front yard. I tooled the whole front yard, a couple different gardens, and I grew all kinds of squash. What's a tool garden? Go back and watch the video. You'll see it behind me on my tool. That's a lifesaver because I wouldn't be able to grow without it. I could have solved the problem, but that wouldn't have solved the problem with the birds coming in and eating all my squash plants. It would have solved the problem with the squirrels. So it's okay because I think this is going to help a lot of people. And I'll tell you something. I will make a tool garden this spring. Because the other thing when I saw that last night on my own video, oh, come on, Robbie, watch your video so you can remember what you did. I did the same thing down there. I had a problem. I was in tears. I planted all this zucchini. And then the squirrels came in, the ground squirrels, and wiped them all out. I said to Gary, I'm done. I'm coming in. I can't do this. After I was done fretting and being upset, I came back out here and thought, I'm going to make a tool garden. Instead of tooling each individual one, I made a tool garden, just like what's in that video that I watched last night. That's what, four years old? I don't even know how old it is. And I grew all the squash I needed because it stopped everything. So I will make a tool garden down there and maybe a tool garden here. Completely different than just covering. That's got white tool on the top that was protecting some cucumbers. This is different. So you're going to see a lot of things after I go back and watch my own videos to remind me what I've done because I have done thousands of things over the years. And I'm so excited 
because I've got something that is so fun coming this spring that I think it's gonna help a lot of people and you're gonna be laughing your head off. But before I bring that out, I wanna get some good shots of it. I wanna see how it works. And that's what I do with a lot of things. I don't wanna come out and tell you, hey, I'm gonna do this, this is gonna work and then find out a month later, you know, or two months later, we could have done it a little differently. I wanna get it right. So when I come out with it, you're gonna see it right. So I've got one thing I experimented with last night, couldn't sleep, after I watched my video, thinking, oh, why didn't I do that, make a tool garden? I did something else with the tops, and it came out fabulous. It was another thing I wanted to work with. So we're gonna have different types of tops that will go with your tote gardens. One $5 tote can grow you so much food, and you say, wait, they're a lot of money. No, you can get them from Walmart and Target and a whole bunch of different stores. A 18 gallon tote for about $7. Don't buy the expensive one unless you want to. You've seen the black ones around here. They are a little pricey. They're down there, but let me tell you something. They never break down. I have never had one break. So if you want to go and spend a little extra money, get the heavy duty black ones that are stackable. If not, you get these for seven. And if $7 is too much for you, go find the Dollar Tree because I planted this year and there are five gallon totes that were $5 totes. Let me back up. $5 totes that are 10 gallons. And that was great enough to grow squash. I grew zucchini in one, the same one I propagated hummingbirds lunch and I had some herbs in there. And that was all in one 10 gallon tote that I compost in place. So there were so much nutrients. It's on my deck, it grew great. Now it's fizzling out. Well, because the season's off for the squash. So we've gonna have a lot of stuff. And what I want you to do right now, even if you're saying it's not time to garden, collect your leaves from all the different trees. Put it somewhere. I don't care if you put it in a trash can, a trash bag, a pile somewhere out of sight. Those leaves make the greatest soil. I can't tell you enough. Everything under those trees that are not being watered or taken care of and need so much grooming because they're growing like mad is growing because the leaves that are breaking down underneath and the branches are creating a lot of nutrients. The leaves have nutrients, but I'll tell you something, the branches have more because that's where it's pulling up and putting it into the leaves and the branches are bigger. So the small branches, chop them up or put them on the bottom of your tote. And as they break down, all the goodies, all the nutrients for your plants will be going into your totes. So anyways, I've talked your ear off. I'm gonna go have breakfast. I've been propagating, moving flowers around, having a great old morning, and then coming out here and sharing this with you because I hadn't really seen it either. I just knew it was gone. Saw it quickly last night as I watered through, but I wanted to come and take a good look at it and think, how are we gonna set this up? I think we're going to have so much fun and grow so much food. And that's what I want you to do. I'm doing this because I want you to get some real food. We all need to garden something. I don't care if it's just some herbs, but I think and I feel we need to garden. And there are things we can grow in our windowsill. Remember, I got mushroom plant growing on my windowsill in the house as a house plant. I actually have peppers too on the windowsill in a semi-sunny location. And they also start my tomatoes on there too. So there's so many things we can grow in the house besides house plants. So with that, have a wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. And ask questions, because even if I don't get to it right away, it gives me something to think about, something you ask me. And when I come out here and talk, I will answer your questions and be able to answer it thoroughly by talking instead of typing out something that really needed more explanations that I couldn't get to. Again, have a great day and don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye. I can't wait to see this up.